Welcome to Tying Michigan's Best Trout Flies. Today we're going to be doing another old Earl Madsen pattern, uh, one that's still popular today. It's called the skunk, and in fact it was the very first dry fly that used rubber legs. So let's get started. So to tie Earl Madsen skunk, I'm using a, just a standard size 10 dry fly hook, and I've already put the thread on it. Uh, the first step in doing this is to put on a put on a tail that'll help flotation. So I'm using uh, a pretty good clump of of uh, calf tail like this. Now it's noteworthy at this point that Earl's original did not use calf tail. Uh, he just used some gray squirrel tail because that's what he had at hand back in those days. But uh, this floats a little bit better. So commonly today. Uh, calf tail is used for the tail. And we're going to have it stick out about half the length of the shank and we're going to attach this with some snug grafts. I'm using 3 aught thread by the way. We're going to need to have a little bit of uh, force when we get into using our deer hair here in just a minute. So we'll get that attached, come back, trim it off here. Now for the, the body on this fly I'm going to use some uh, a black poly for flotation purposes. Again this is a little bit of a variation from Earl's original. Earl used black chenille on his, but as you know, a chenille is not a very good floater. Uh, back in those days, you had to put a lot of muslin on those flies to keep them afloat. So we've kind of nowadays uh, switched to using some polypropylene for flotation. So let's just attach that and secure it down with a few wraps there. Now we're going to come back and just wrap the body on. It's a very simple fly. It doesn't take much. And secure it by the head here. And we're going to take the thread back about a third of the way down the shank. And we're going to put some rubber legs on. Uh, there's been a lot of flies come out in recent years, dry flies, that incorporate rubber legs. But Earl, being the innovator he was, was quite likely the first person to use rubber legs on a dry fly. This fly probably dates back to the 1940s. So at this point we're going to attach a set of white rubber legs on each side about this length. You can put it whatever length that, that you want. I like the, them to be around the length of the shank of the hook and like that and then we can trim that about the same length. If it comes out a little longer, that's that's fine. We can always trim it to length. And, and a second set on the opposite side, placed in about the same position. And we'll even that up. So now we've got our legs on. Now, the wing on this fly is a heavy section of deer hair. I've got some deer hair here. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut a clump out. You'll you'll see why we need three aught thread because I'm going to use a section of deer hair that's about this thick to make this wing. This is going to help to buoy the fly up and keep it afloat. So we, And we want that deer hair to come back maybe just past the end of these ca uh, this uh, calf tail tail. So I'm going to cut that, cut that clump off and maybe just get some of the fuzz out. And then set it up here to measure it about there and about to there. We're going to cut that right off flush now. And then we're going to come back and hold these uh, legs out of, out of the way and anchor it firmly with a few firm wraps up here at the head to start with. Now you can let those legs go and we'll come back and we're going to take some firm but looser wraps right in between your uh, rubber legs. That'll hold the, the back wing down, but that's not really what secures it. This, this uh, hair is going to be secured up here at the head. We're going to go back and put some more tight wraps in this deer hair head. Straight down, straight down, straight down until the hair stops moving. That'll make it anchored in place. It gives us a nice big head, a lot of deer hair on there that'll float this fly. And we'll just uh, finish it off up here at the front and then whip finish with a few wraps holding everything out of place. Take your whip finisher and, and uh, finish the head off. And then 
your Earl Madsen skunk is all done. Now, just a word about this fly. You see there's a lot of deer here on there with a big head. Uh, that helps to keep it afloat. There's no hackle. Uh, and we tie this fly with a number of different body colors, yellow and olive, uh, anything that's going to imitate a big terrestrial, maybe a cricket or a hopper or a beetle or anything like that. But this fly is an old fly. It's still very effective. It's still very popular in northern Michigan. So tie some of these up and see what you think about them. There's the Earl Madsen skunk. We'll see you the next time.